Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And Amen. Peace be with We gather together to celebrate this Mass for the fourth Sunday of Lent. It's a time when, in fact, our regular public Masses have been suspended at this time due to the corona uh, virus that we have actually uh, providing also some resources to our people at home that they can uh, come onto the website and uh, indeed um, celebrate with us and priest and offer mass for Bishop Jew for the people of the diocese at this time and we pray God's continual blessings coming to us and we indeed turn to the Lord in prayer uh, in solidarity with each other. Lord Jesus, you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you are the Good Shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemnity that we are about to celebrate. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I proceed for the reading, please. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen myself a king among his sons. When Samuel arrived, he caught sight of Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed one stands there before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Take no notice of his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. He then asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? He answered, There is still one left, the youngest. He is out looking after the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not sit down to eat until he comes. Jesse had him sent for, a boy of fresh complexion with fine eyes and pleasant bearing. The Lord said, Come, anoint him, for this is the one. At this, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him where he stood with his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord seized on David and stayed with him from that day on. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd, there, there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. And the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, 
In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. And the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light, for the effects of the light are seen in complete goodness and right living and truth. Try to discover what the Lord wants of you. Have nothing to do with futile works of darkness, but exposing them by contrast. The things which are done in secret are things that people are ashamed even to speak of. But anything exposed by the light will be illuminated, and anything illuminated turns into light. That is why it is said, wake up from your sleep, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Gospel acclamation. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory, Glory to, to you, word, word of, of God, God, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, for him to have been born blind? Neither he nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. He was born blind so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as the day lasts, I must carry out the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat on the ground, made a paste of the spittle, put this over the man's eyes, and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, a name which means sent. So the blind man went off and washed himself and came away with his sight restored. His neighbours and people who earlier had seen him begging said, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it is the same one. Others said, No, he only looks like him. The man himself said, I am the man. So they said to him, How then? Do your eyes come to be open? The man called Jesus, he answered, made a paste, dubbed my eyes with it, and said to me, Go and wash at Siloam. So I went, and when I washed, I could see. They asked, Where is he? I don't know, he answered. They brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. It had been a Sabbath day when Jesus made the paste and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, He put paste on my eyes, and I washed, and I can see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man cannot be from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself, now that he has opened your eyes. He is a prophet, replied the man. However, the Jews would not believe that the man had been blind and had his sight restored without first sending for his parents and asking them, Is this man really your son, who you say was born blind? If so, how is it that he is now able to see? His parents answered, We know that he is our son, and we know that he was born blind, but we don't know how it is that he can see now, or who opened his eyes. He is old enough. Let him speak for himself. 
His parents spoke like this out of fear of the Jews who had already agreed to expel from the synagogue anyone who should acknowledge Jesus as the Christ. This was why his parents said, He is old enough, ask him. So the Jews again sent for the man and said to him, Give glory to God. For our part, we know that this man is a sinner. The man answered, I do not know if he is a sinner. I only know that I was blind and now I can see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He replied, I have told you once and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it all again? Do you want to become his disciples too? At this they hurled abuse at him. You can be his disciple, they said. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this man, we don't know where he come, comes from. The man replied, Now here is an astonishing thing. He has opened my eyes and you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but God does listen to men who are devout and do his will. Ever since the world began, it is unheard for anyone to open the eyes of a man who was born blind. If this man was not from God, he couldn't do that thing. Are you trying to teach us, they replied, and you a sinner through and through since you were born? And they drove him away. Jesus heard that they had driven him away, and when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Sir, the man replied, Tell me who he is, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You are looking at him. He is speaking to you. The man said, Lord, I believe and worshipped him. Jesus said, it is for judgment that I have come into this world, so that those without sight may see and those with sight turn blind. Hearing this, some Pharisees who were present said to him, We are not blind, surely. Jesus replied, Blind? If you were, you would not be guilty. But since you say, We see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, we've listened to a short gospel there of the man born blind. It's a fascinating story. And uh, in fact, it's the blind man whose sight is restored, in fact, uh, teaches the Pharisees. And uh, they're not in particularly uh, amused about all that. Indeed, today uh, we're told to rejoice, uh, be glad, rejoice with the Lord. And why would we rejoice? It's the part way through Lent, uh, difficult times. But it's because of the goodness of the Lord that we're always called upon to uh, have that uh, a strong faith. And indeed, we see that we ask the Lord to help us as in these times we journey towards Easter. In a different way than perhaps we've ever done in the past, but uh, we do it perhaps from distance from each other, but not distance from the Lord, and indeed in solidarity with each other as we celebrate Eucharist here, as we enjoy in prayers at home. So in our baptism we received a candle, uh, the light of Christ entrusted to us uh, to be kept burning brightly so that we might in that see in the darkness. Uh, we are to be like the blind men, children of the light, uh, indeed, uh, showing that light in our everyday living. So today's gospel, Jesus gives sight to the blind man. We've heard the wonderful dialogue between Jesus and the man who had his sight restored. He now not only sees, but he also comes to believe in Jesus, not just as a prophet, but faith in Jesus who is a person who comes and is the light of the world. The Pharisees say they are not blind. We too need to ask ourselves, you know, how open are we to uh, the Lord? And perhaps we need our, our sight, our belief to be strengthened uh, each day. We are on that journey, a pilgrim journey. We became uh, children 
of God and indeed uh, we continually live in the light of their disciples called upon to share in Jesus' mission. So we do this by our act of living, our Christian faith, our care and concern for those perhaps in more difficult situations than ours at this particular time. And we're called upon to respond to the Lord by uh, that care and concern. So as we join in this Eucharist together, we indeed uh, pray uh, for others too. We're still in Lent, but we're called to reconciliation. So let us indeed see the Lord calls us to be uh, Easter people, to rejoice, be glad. The Lord continues to provide for us. So each day let us continue in these times together, difficulties, but we uh, indeed are called upon to uh, give thanks to God as we indeed uh, celebrate the Eucharist at this day. join now in our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, and, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he became down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious by them. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We should pour forth prayers at all times, but above all, in these days of Lent and at this time, we ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. That those who will be baptized at Easter may grow in faith and understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are helpless and abundant may be given the blessings of peace and security. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are afflicted and tempted may be strengthened by God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 hear our prayer. That we may all learn to set our own interest aside and reach out in love to our brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. In conclusion, we might, uh, Archbishop of Coleridge, come for our prayer. We might uh, have that as our conclusion to our prayer. Almighty and all merciful God, lover of the human race, healer of all our wounds, in whom there is no shadow of death, save us in this time of crisis. Grant wisdom and courage to our leaders. Watch over all medical people as they tend the sick and work for a cure. Stir in us a sense of solidarity beyond all isolation. If our doors are closed, let our hearts be open. By the power of your love, destroy the virus of fear, that hope may never die, 
and the light of Easter, the triumph of life, may shine upon us and the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord, risen from the dead, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 Holy Mary, health of the sick, pray, pray, pray for us. us. Saint Joseph, guardian pray. of us all, pray, pray, pray for us. us. Continue our Eucharist. We won't have an offertory procession this uh, Are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Mercy be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be your sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept this sacrifice in your hands for the glory and glory of the name, for our good and the good of all Jesus. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both be faithful, be revered them, and present them to you as a fitting for salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration that we and with all the host of angels cry out and without end acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
unto you, Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, May your unworthy servant and to all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let our Savior's command and form my divine teaching, we dare to say. Thou Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Offer each other a sign of peace. Peace with your sister. Peace with you. The Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. O 
God who enlightened everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Amen. with your spirit. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go now in peace, proclaiming the gospel. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.